Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome to Alan Wake 2. I am very excited to get into this game. I remember playing the original Alan Wake over 10 years ago now with a friend of mine. I remember beating that game, and it stuck in my head so much that I still remember like a lot of the main plot elements. And more than anything else, I remember the mood and the atmosphere, and the game just feeling amazing. So yeah, I'm very excited for this one. My goal for the playthrough is to provide an immersive experience for you guys. I'll be playing not slowly, but thoroughly. We'll be reading any journal entries or lore tidbits we find as we go. Otherwise, I'll be trying to keep commentary to a minimum. Before we get into things, I would recommend turning the lights down low and turning the volume up. And thank you guys so much for being here and for clicking on the video. I really do appreciate it. We are going to go on normal. I want to provide an immersive experience. I don't want to struggle overly with combat. That being said, if combat is too easy, we will crank things up if we skill up. Back to the beginning. We all come to a story with hopes and expectations, looking for an answer. Sometimes it would be better to live with that hope without ever knowing the full story. In a horror story, there are only victims and monsters. And the trick is not to end up as either. But trapped by the genre, we are all ripped to pieces along the way. This is not the story I hoped it would be. This is not the ending I wanted. This story will eat us alive. This story is a monster. And monsters wear many faces. I don't know who we are, but I hazard a guess to say that whoever we are, we are in trouble. You don't end up like this out in the middle of the woods in the night unless you are in trouble. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is it just me or did that look like our boy Alan? in also here's a good time to mention the game is graphic and violent and scary if you're not into that hey, be Kilo. warned how are you i'm good mom how are you this trip might take a little longer than i thought i'm sorry i've been gone so much lately logan oh my god mom it's not your fault people get all murdery what happened just work stuff right well, Dad and I are just watching the latest episode of Night Springs here. Mom, it's so good. No spoilers. I'll let you get back to the show. You were supposed to wait and watch with me. I love you both. This is what happens when you go on work trips, Mom. Love you too. And say hi to Casey. Tell him to stop brooding so much. Logan? I will. Bye, kiddo.
Logan thinks you should try cheering up. <laughs> Snarky kid. Wonder where she gets that from. It can't be a coincidence that another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Feels like the killer's leaving us a message. Hmm. I'm glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. It's right up your alley. You should take lead. Think of me as the backup. Okay. Any words of advice? Nothing that would cheer anyone up. Aldrin Lake. Time to get to work. A deputy was supposed to be here to show us to the crime scene. There's the car, so where's the deputy? <laughs> Eaten by a bear? I'll check out that map. Return one invitation. All right, let's check out the audio settings. I have it, I think, mostly where I want it. I think maybe the audio dialogue could go up a little bit. Yeah, let's just crank that all the way up. You guys let me know about the sound settings. If anything needs to be adjusted, we can definitely do that. I want music to be in the forefront. Um, sound effects like gunshots, character footsteps, and yeah, we can crank that up as well. Let's Let's go with that for now, and you guys can let me know. Get to the crime scene, find the deputies. Before we get swallowed up by the trees. Map displays key locations in the area. Could be our deputy. I can go take a look. Quit. Hey, over here. Hey there, Agent Casey, right? Sheriff Raker said you'd be coming by to take over the case. You're half right. Anderson. Saga Anderson, I'll be leading this case. Seems you already know my partner, Alex Casey. Shoot. Sorry about that, ma'am. I'm Deputy Mulligan. I just figured that, you know, that, uh... Federal agent's right here, Thornton. My partner, Thornton, <laughs> down at the crime scene. He's not what you call the sharpest axe in the shed. Were there any witnesses? Yeah, a couple out of towners. I wonder what they were doing sneaking around the woods at night. I mentioned the city folk. It's pretty suspicious. Not that we have anything against city folk, cried Thornton. But don't worry. Sheriff Breaker took them back to town a while ago. What can you tell us about the crime scene? Tell them about the heart. I was getting to that, Thornton. <clears throat> well, we reckon there are some uh, organs that are currently outside the victim's person when they should be, well, you know, inside. I want to see the body. How do we get there? Oh, sure, that's real simple. Just through the hole in the fence, down the hill towards the lake, around the old convenience store, you can't miss it. Everything's been closed since the area was fenced off. The store, the campground, all of it. Hey, Mulligan, tell him I'm here, Winky. I'll show him around. They got it, Thornton. Before we get to the crime scene, there's time to review the facts of the case so far. 
Make sure I'm seeing the clues clearly. All right, access the case board. The mind place. The mind place. My version of the mind palace technique. To sift through clues and work the case. Building the mind place again for each case. Using each field office as a model in my head. The facts are on the board. Everything we know about the previous murders. Worth taking another look. The case board is a mental technique that allows Saga... Saga? Am I pronouncing that right? To analyze clues and progress the investigation. Uh, let's see. Victims. All victims reported missing in 2010. No other commonalities. Ted Lane... Wendy Davis, Percy Wolf, murder method, slight difference in murders, bloating, only commonality in bodies but not cause of death, chest trauma, exposure to water post-mortem, bruising on wrist and legs, deep gash in the chest, heart missing, all bodies experienced bloating, killer profile, post-mortem tattooing of the body, the murder targets have no discernible criminal traits. Chest trauma resembles animal butchery techniques. Okay. We can move around with Wazda. Oh, we could zoom in. Hmm, that would have been nice to know before trying to read all of it. You can leave by pressing escape. You're already hard at work, Anderson. Close to cracking it. We're just getting started. Let's head down the hill to the crime scene. Fucking nature. Gives me a headache. There's too much sky. Hey, Casey. You putting me in charge. Why now? Look, Anderson, you're a better detective than I am. You've cracked cases that had the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. Are you thinking of retiring? You know what happens to cops who say this is their last case. Mm-hmm. Real funny, Anderson. Stairs are out. You okay to jump down? I'm not that old. Mirror Peak. The mighty mountain in the distance is no other than Mirror Peak, the iconic landmark overlooking Cauldron Lake. From the right angle, its beauty will be reflected on the calm surface of the lake, mirrored in all of its inverted glory. Whoops. So yeah, anytime we want to enter the Mind Palace, we can hit Tab. Oh, we have a map here now. Okay. The murder site's down this way.
Not a bad place to get murdered. Hmm. If getting back to nature is your thing. Damn. Should have brought an umbrella. I like the rain. The only thing around here that feels like home. You think the local law had the sense to put up a tarp? Hmm. If they did, next coffee's on me. Kind of wondering when it's going to be worth it for us to go off the beaten path and look around a bit. I don't think there's anything for us to find quite yet. Hey! Deputy Thornton, I take it. That's me, at your service. Ready to get this case solved. Now the body's behind the store. Come on, I'll show you. So, FBI, huh? That's so cool. Hunting down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob. You forgot the UFO cover-ups. What? Those are real? You guys hiring? Let's just see this body, shall we? I mean, we all know that it's the Federal Bureau of Control that uh, covers up the UFO incidents. Now, this is the scene of the crime. We found him on the table. And we didn't touch nothing, you know, procedures and stuff. Thanks, Deputy. No tarp. You owe me a coffee. Okay. Let's start by examining our guest of honor. Does this fit the M.O. of the previous murders? Body is positioned on the table. Ritualistic. You can unlock your first key image. You can place it on the case board inside the Mind Palace. C allows the saga to see active clues. The key image can be selected, placed on the case board. Another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Coincidence? Placing a key image on the case board begins a new line of investigation. Another body has been found in the woods near Bright Falls. Perfect timing. Need to see if this is linked to the killings we're here to investigate. Alright, so there were already killings happening here, and then right before we show up, this man gets killed also. You can collect clues from the body to progress the investigation. The killer left the heart right next to the body. Bruising on the wrist from the cargo straps holding him down. Inside stab wound, chest cut open, heart removed. Not quite sure how we pinned the one. Keep trying. Newly discovered clues can be placed onto the open question. Okay. Oh, okay, we just hover it over the post-it. And then it will automatically apply it to the board. Heart removed from chest. Strapped by the wrists. Definitely matches the previous murders. But this time the heart and the straps were left behind. More clues to work with. This makes four murders that we know about. The clues have resolved the open question and unlocked a deduction. 
As you advance the investigation, new questions will be unlocked, updating your goals. Okay. You could check the updated goals by pressing control. So we need to learn more about the victim and learn more about the killer. Who is our victim? Who killed him? Need to find more clues. Large amount of blood on the table. The victim died here. Multiple people were here. Multiple killers? Someone was drinking beer. They spent time here, waiting. Someone left in a hurry. Knocked the tripod over. Was it for a camera? Footprints indicating multiple killers. Quite the party. Any idea who the victim is? Oh, I sure do. His name is Nightingale. He was FBI. He came to town about 13 years ago. Now, I haven't heard a word about him since. Well, until now. Nightingale? Robert Nightingale? Oh, yes. Oh. You probably knew him. Brothers in arms. Oh, and sisters. Okay. Victim is Robert Nightingale, last seen in Bright Falls 13 years ago. No one's heard from this guy in 13 years. Why surface now? Where has he been? So you knew our victim? Well, I didn't recognize him in his current state. But yeah, I... Ran into him a few times at Quantico. Never worked any cases together. After his partner got killed in the field, he went off the deep end. Got the boot pretty quick after that. Nightingale went missing 13 years ago. 2010. The same as all the other victims. Certainly fits the pattern. Makes me wonder what was going on that year. Probably something this town wants to forget. So what happened to Nightingale after the Bureau let him go? I only know the rumors. Depression led to booze, booze led to paranoia. He got some wild ideas in his head, chased ghosts until he fell off the map. Guess he ended up here. I bet there's more to that story. But no happy ending. I think that's everything. For now at least. Robert Nightingale, ex-FBI, came to Bright Falls 13 years ago. No. They planned for the murder to happen here. Passing the time with equipment ready. They were waiting for him. But why Nightingale? He's been missing for 13 years. Why here? Why now? Profiling. Get into the subject's head. See what they saw. Feel what they felt. 
Use whatever I know about them to guide my intuition to a revelation. Piece it together. You can use profiling inside the mind palace to get inside the heads of suspects and victims. Okay. Using her intuition, Saga can discover new clues by profiling people of interest. Agent Nightingale has been MIA for 13 years. How did he end up here? Up from the lake that's not a lake. It's dark. He was there too. You are not allowed in the lake until he says otherwise. Robert Nightingale came from the lake before his murder. Well, that's like something out of control. <laughs> When she was hearing tidbits from the prior director. Nightingale was chosen as the victim. Hmm. Why? Click the switch. It goes click. Lights are off. But somebody's home. Somebody's home. This wasn't some random act of violence. This was a ritual. And Nightingale a component. They didn't see him as a person. More like a container for something. Nightingale was chosen as the victim. Why? Click the switch. It goes click. This mug always cheers me up. The lake is connected to Nightingale somehow. Casey, let's take a look down by the lake. Lead the way. Sounds good. Uh, this way, right? Right. Well, okay. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just wait here. This one of your hunches, Anderson? Did something happen at the lake? I think Nightingale came up from that direction. From the lake. Probably looking for shelter, safety. They were waiting for him. When you're ready, I'd love to hear what you put together so far. Sure. It's not that complicated. Nightingale was out in the woods alone at night, possibly nude. The killers knew he was here, ambushed him, dragged him to the campgrounds, strapped him to the table, cut his heart out. But then they were interrupted by those witnesses, the bookers. The job is unfinished. That seems pretty complicated to me. What was this guy doing skinny dipping at this time of year? I haven't figured that part out yet. Mm-hmm. Lots of questions. Lots of answers for us to find. I didn't know trees got that big. I was looking to turn off motion blur. Oh, it's not on. It kind of looks like it is. Uh, gives me the creeps. You need to get out more. It is kind of creepy, though. Tracks. Barefoot. Nightingales? They come out from under the boulder. It makes no sense. There's a piece of paper on the ground. We're not going to pick up the piece of paper? Uh, okay. Oh, we did. A page full of text on one side. Not a printout. Written with a typewriter. Old school. Lines scratched out and edits added with a pen. Mm-hmm. Like a manuscript. Page of a story. Hmm. The killer left a message. It 
it's for us. The text is about us. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. And then there was the page they found. The first step down into terrifying depths. Reading, Reading the, the words. words. These, These words, words felt, like a message. felt like a message. Someone knew they were here. Someone playing a game with them. An invitation. How could they not accept, even if they knew it would end up hurting them? Someone's been watching us. Playing a sick game with us. You were right. This is right up my alley. Nightingale came this way. Either he dropped this page, or the killers left it for us. I should profile Nightingale about this page. We found a page in the woods. A story about these events. What is Nightingale's role in this? I carry his words close to my chest now. Inside. The awful truth. You must dig it out. Something was put inside him. In his chest. I must find out what. When they removed the heart, they did reference how the other stuff wasn't there. So this she already read out. If we get any that we don't read out, I'll read them here. Oh, they, it, she didn't read it out fully. The victim was one of their own, FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale, gone missing here 13 years ago. Now he had suddenly turned up, only to be murdered in a brutal and bloody ritual on the very day of their arrival. And then there was the page. This page. The first page they had found, not the last. The first step down into terrifying depths. Secret truths trembling beyond the threshold. Reading the words, these words felt like a message. It was a message. Someone knew they were here. What they were doing. Someone playing a game with them, leading them on, in invitation. How could they not accept the sheer audacity of this impossible mystery presented to them, even if they knew it would end up hurting them? I think he came from the lake, but his tracks make no sense. Nah. Casey, I think something's been put inside Nightingale's body. Let's tell the deputies to get the body to the town morgue. Okay. Whoever wrote that page made sure it read like a story. Like a scene from a thriller. I hate all of it. The text said we'd find more. I believe it. But what's the purpose? They're twisting events to create their own narrative to do what? Entertain some fantasy? Projecting their desires? Are we characters or the audience? Witnesses to their design? All the above? It's all about control. Deciding hey, what happens to You made it back. Who. Good. Don't let it drag you in. Too late. I'm already hooked. I need the next chapter. 
I hope you didn't get stuck in any of those big puddles. Crazy flooding down there, huh? Just like I said. Deputy, I want the body taken back to town for a proper examination, ASAP. Well, sure, but the coroner won't be back in town for another week after deer fest. Not a problem. I'll do it myself. Oh, and Sheriff Breaker called to say he's got the bookers at the Oh Deer Diner in town. Oh, and I've got a key to the gate. It's a shortcut back to the parking lot just up the hill. Thanks. Let's get the car. Drive to Bright Falls and talk to these witnesses, the bookers. At the diner, right? I, I could use a cup of coffee. Let's try that shortcut the deputy mentioned. Sounds good. Seems like a nice town so far. Murders aside. Pretty woods. Cute lodge we got set up in. We should go for a hike if we get a chance. Now you're just being mean, Anderson. Deputies aren't exactly up to the task, but hopefully the sheriff will be more helpful. Not a surprise about the deputies. Doubt they see much stuff this gruesome. fit the clues all together yet. Heart removed, tripod, tracks leading to a dead end. A tripod for a camera? <gasps> to record a... <sighs> I worry that if we run or rush like what just happened, we will lose bits of uh, flavor dialogue. So that's why I've been RP walking so much. Here we are. Let's drive back to town and meet the sheriff at the diner. I can't get that manuscript page out of my head. I've never seen killers reach out so directly before. Damn impressive work so far. With your technique, these hunches were moving fast. I wasn't sure about taking a case so far from home, but I'm thrilled to be here for this mystery. Need to swing by the lodge to get anything from the field office? No, I'm all set. I'll park there anyway. I want to walk to the diner, get a feel for the town. The diner's just up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. Oh, there we go. Now we got the town map. Very nice. So the diner is over to the east. Sheriff station around the corner from that. It looks like maybe we don't have the entire town map. Hmm. 
There we go. Just how much coffee have you had today, Charlie? <laughs> don't know, don't care. <laughs> how much did you have? Not enough. That's how much. Not to toot my own horn, but I am pretty darn sure my, <laughs> I mean our float, will be the belle of the ball at this year's Deer Fest. Just a few I'm going to go check something out. Nice looking float be right back. Got it. This is my first Deer Fest, so I don't know what to expect, really. It is the finest entertainment a town like ours has to offer. The happiest day of the year. Like Christmas. Man, or better. What is well, I certainly hope so. Isn't it? I hate Charlene, it. are you as uncomfortable as I am? You don't think the amount of hot, caffeinated beverages you've downed has anything to do with it? I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh, I'm in hell. Wombat City. Hey! concludes our debate on whether pets should be allowed at this year's bake sale. For those of you... Uh, what is this? Tapio's weather report. Our debate on whether pets should be allowed at this year's bake sale. For those of you just tuning in, you're listening to the Pat Main Radio Hour. Brought to you by Davis Family Moose Jerky. And boy, what an eventful day here in Bright Falls. By now, we've all seen the FBI setting up shop in town, and I'm sure you're all asking the same question I am. Did they bring all this darn rain with them? Deerfest is right around the corner, and we're all crossing our fingers for sunshine. So, I reached out to our top meteorologist for a weather update. She never responded. But I have her uncle Tapio on the line from Watery. Tapio, are you there? Yes. Great. And Tapio, what kind of weather can we expect today? Rain. Uh, <laughs> that definitely seems to be on the menu. How about over the next week? Also rain. Right. Care to uh, uh, elaborate? Any chance the sun will poke out in time for Deerfest? No. Well. Deerfest is coming, rain or shine. And that parade lineup is looking dandy as ever. Yes, I like this parade because they have one float in the shape of a swan. Long neck and everything. The verization. Not sure if copyrighted. <laughs> I didn't see an option in the audio for streamer safe or YouTube safe. So we'll just hope for the best, I guess. <laughs> if not, then part of this will probably get muted. All right, let's start heading this way. No one seems like super interested in just chatting with us. I mean, they all say hi. They don't even make eye contact. Any, Any good finds? Zilch. But someone left a gross surprise under their bed for housekeeping. They were nuts. So, that's what all that screaming was about? Either that, or the couple on their honeymoon. Mercetta won't roll over on the issues. Yup, already got the answers to these.
mystery business of yours going. We missed you at trivia night. You did? How badly? <laughs> Stop avoiding the question mark. Pretty nice day to be working outside. I don't envy the guys stuck on desk duty. This is where the action is. Well, they've got quite a few deputies for such a small little town. to protect its citizens from the dangers of unsanitary conditions. Let me guess. The FBI. Welcome to Bright Falls. It's nice to have you here. I got you both some coffee. Oh, it's Washington's finest. Nice to meet you, Sheriff. I'm set for coffee. You know, I wouldn't say no to another. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Tim Brinker. And let me just say, I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No. No, the bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. Casey, you compare notes with the sheriff. Take your time. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. Have you had many people besides the known victims go missing? Sure. But it's slowed down ever since Cauldron Lake was fenced off. Let me guess. Missing person cases spiked around 2010. The fence was built just after. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hmm. I can't believe that happened. I mean, I'm pretty sure this place looks exactly the same as it did in the first game. I wonder if the price of the Big Buck Cheeseburger has uh, been affected by inflation. This is exactly why he hates small towns. Keep it down, Ed. You know how touchy these rural types can be. Hey, how you doing? How can you be so calm? Corpse is a part of the job. Can't dwell on it too much. Excuse me. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy and he's Ed. Hello, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about. Okay. What were you doing at Colgin Lake last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. So what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake 
He was acting crazy, shouting weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos in deer masks. They were tearing into the naked guy with knives, like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted and called the cops. What makes you say it was a cult? <laughs> the masks and knives aren't enough. Yeah. They were shouting, cult of the tree, the cult of the tree, cult of the tree. Oh, and then we found out. The whole thing was terrifying. That's all. Thanks, Saga. We're dealing with an organized group of killers, not a lone serial killer. Background cases accumulate clues about broader ongoing topics. I need to know more about the code of the tree if I'm going to shut them down. Doesn't look right. Now, that guy was going to say something, and he stopped himself. Let's see. The cult of the tree. What aren't the bookers telling me? I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The cult wants their spruce tree back, Tammy. Finders keepers, Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? The defense was built to hide what's there. They say the rider fell in the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions. Past the bolt cutters. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with the murder. They were telling the truth. So, I mean, she obviously has some kind of power. Some kind of insight into people and events and possibly objects. Would that be like psychometry? I'm not sure what you would call that. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. Right. You need to hand it over. I told you not to keep that thing to me. Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we have any more questions. <laughs> like we'd even dream of missing dear Oh, God. Saga! Saga Anderson. As I live and breathe. I thought we'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. Mm -hmm. How are you? We know uh, Rose. I'm sorry. Who are you? Right, exactly. I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose. You know me. I don't think I do. Uh-oh. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? She drowned. Your daughter? That's so weird, you don't remember. 
How do you know I have a daughter? Oh, I know what this is. You're blocking out your traumatic memories. Happens on TV all the time. No. You're mistaking me for someone else. <laughs> if you say so. That's just a little bit weird. I wonder if other people here are going to know us. Hello. Jewelry can be used as a subtle indicator of membership, but this isn't subtle. A badge of pride? All set? My guys have Nightingale at the morgue if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. Well, Casey, I got a lead. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The Cult of the Tree. A murder cult. Fuck. Have you heard of this Cult of the Tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. If you're in the woods at night, the cult will get you. That sort of thing. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something. That's what I was just thinking. I played some D&D back in the day. Wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, Sheriff! Oh, God. Looks like you have some guests. Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true. More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. Always has been. Why? What'd she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible, but it's best not to take it personal. Hey, boss. Corpse is downstairs ready to go. Yep, in the morgue, all prepped. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. Oh, this is the Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Anything you need, just uh, let us know. We appreciate the support, Sheriff. Hey. All right, as much as I want to keep playing and playing and playing, guys, I'm going to take a break right here. This seems like a good spot for it before we do any kind of autopsy type of deal. Um, this game is amazing. This is giving me the best of vibes. It feels like an episode of X-Files and an episode of Fringe. And obviously, just some really awesome mystery vibes. I'm really, really digging it. I hope you guys are as well. Let me know what you do think. I would love to hear from you. If you are enjoying the content, leaving a like, subbing to the channel, ringing the bell, all those things help me out immensely. And I appreciate those that do. Until next time, guys, take care of yourselves out there in the real world and take care of each other. And we will see you back here again very soon. Bye for now.